I do personally believe that we will see an overt confiscation of gold in this country because even recent history tells us that that is likely to happen. Desperate governments do desperate things, but they have to also stay within the letter of the laws that they created. So, oh, eminent domain laws, which means that they have to pay you for what they take from you. If you're looking at bars or bullion, that's pretty easy because they manage, even admitting to managing, as I know you guys know, the precious metals prices mm -hmm. because a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency. So it would be pretty easy if say spot was at 3000 or $4,000 at that point, and they chose to make a confiscation to say, okay, well, we'll pay you $10,000 for it. And most people not understanding that they are about to completely crash the currency. Although I guess it would be kind of hard to believe that anybody th thinks they wouldn't or aren't doing that now. But um, a lot of people would go, well, wow, it's only worth $4,000. And look at this, they're willing to pay me 10 for it. Okay, because they want you to volunteer. They do not want pushback. And then they just reset it. 3,500%. I mean, I don't know what the cover ratio is going to be, and I don't know what that exactly that's going to look like, except mm -hmm. you can look at Venezuela. You can look at a lot of countries have gone through it, and it just goes like that. So for me personally, if I can hold it, and I'm not talking about silver in this case, I'm just talking about gold, but if I can hold it inside of an IRA, I don't buy it because I believe that it's gonna be confiscated. So I personally, that's not always been true. It just, once we hit a certain point in the trend cycle, I was no longer comfortable holding bullion. So I only buy gold collectible coins and that's all I own. In, in the strategy that we were talking about earlier, part of the strategy is right now you've got gold and silver that are severely undervalued. And you have all other asset classes that are severely overvalued. Well, that's going to flip flop. Mm -hmm. And I want the kind of gold and silver that I can actually use in the normal marketplace because part of building that dynastic wealth foundation or, or part of retirement planning, to be perfectly honest with you, is to ensure that you have income that you cannot outlive. So, so for me, yeah, maybe you don't turn in your bullion, but it's going to be a lot more challenging using it in the normal marketplace, which is definitely part of my personal strategy. You know, I, they did confiscate silver back in 33, but the difference between the two is that silver gets used up in manufacturing and gold does not. So I don't really have the same feelings around confiscation of silver that I do of gold. So I own like all of the above, you mm -hmm. know, and, and I a hundred percent agree with you. The silver is really my barterable part of the portfolio, right? Cause I yeah. like all the different sizes. I do the same thing with, with gold because I like the sovereigns, for example, for like property taxes, because mm -hmm. you have your house paid off, but if you can't pay your property taxes, you're gonna lose your house. So, you know, it just depends on what, again, you know, what am I trying to accomplish here? That's the direction that I'll go in. But for those people that are just looking to sustain a standard of living, then having all silver, would definitely work because it is your barterable piece. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking to really grow wealth, you can hold a lot more wealth in the same size package. Understood. And so it just, again, it, it, it it's establish your goal. That's the first thing we do. What mm -hmm. are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? And then you design the portfolio around that rather than just kind of willy nilly no matter what you do with gold and silver, you can't get burned because it's so ridiculously undervalued. But is it really going to be 
the right tool for the specific job that you're looking at. Because even when you're saying, well, you know, gold is expensive and silver is not, you know, not as expensive and all of that's true, but you can still get fractional gold coins. Um, mm -hmm. And you'll have to forgive me because I don't work in the retail area of the business anymore. So I really don't know what they go for. But, you know, you can get fractional gold, old fractional gold coins for a few hundred bucks. You know, those are industrial metals and platinum is primarily controlled by Russia. But it is definitely a precious metal, but this is about the, for me, this is about a currency reset. So my focus and what I accumulate for myself are the currency metals, gold and silver. Well, I can tell you that I, I set up my personal portfolio with silver to sustain my living expenses, my standard of living for 10 years. Uh, this is this is a big one, so I don't know things with the technology and all things move really a lot faster, but it's really going to be based upon confidence because it's a con game. This whole <laughs> fiat money system is a big con game. Yeah. And so when people are bloodied and battered and bruised enough and they lose that confidence, how long is that going to take to get that confidence back? And at mm -hmm. the end of the day, even when you think back a few years ago um, to the sovereign debt crisis in Europe, a lot of people survived it by pulling out their silver and their gold in any form. It is monetary at its base and that's how they survived. Plus the IMF has actually discussed putting a component of gold back in to the SDR, which is the stands for special drawing rights. It's just a name, but it's the IMF global currency, which personally I think is going to be the new world reserve currency because you, you can have a global currency, then you can have a local currency, which is what we're going to have. But roughly there were about 40 or 42 years between wars. Then they would go into hyperinflationary mode to fund the war. Then, and they would get rid of the central banks. Central banks you typically only had a 15 to 20 year charter. And then they'd hyperinflate the fake currency away, the fiat currency away, and they'd go back on the gold standard. And if you look at the time between wars, what I saw when I did this study is, you know, World War I to World War II, the Korean War, etc. The time frame got shorter and shorter and shorter, and we've been in a perpetual war since 1989.